Hello, warrior friends. I'm very excited to say that I am here with Jackson Pierce. Jackson is a musician and he resides in Florida. Hi, Jackson. How's it going, everybody? Yeah. So, Jackson, I'd like to start off just by telling the warriors a little bit about where you're from, your background, maybe even your childhood. And okay. we'll start there. And, uh, I'll just touch briefly on it because I could talk forever. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Indiana. I uh, went to went to high school there. I graduated college there. I went to Indiana University. I uh, got a bachelor's degree uh, in sports marketing and management. I moved out to Arizona uh, the same month that I graduated. And um, I lived in Arizona for about 14 years up until about 32 days ago. And, you know, I had a normal life for a long time, at least what I consider normal. You know, I got out of college. I I got a job at a college, actually, um, doing financial aid. Uh, after that, I fell into a telemarketing company for an industry for about five, six years. Uh, I was a branch manager at Enterprise Rent-A-Car for about three or four years. And that's kind of where my addiction first started. I got into a relationship with a woman. Um, that I had met through an ex-girlfriend actually like a year prior. Um, and um, long story short, she uh, she had introduced me to meth. I'd never done it before. And I got to the point where I was using daily. I was like not sleeping at all. And I was going to my job where I had a 45 minute to an hour commute each way in Phoenix and heavy traffic. And I had to manage this branch where I had to you know deal with accounts and vendors and my employees and my boss and like, yada yada like and long story short it came crashing down and i uh mm -hmm. i got a random drug test because they knew something was up and i got fired and uh you know i worked some other companies at godaddy and a cell phone company and uh, about 32 days ago you know i kind of fell into a funk after um some mishaps in my life where there was an infidelity um on my girlfriend's part and then my car got stolen with all my stuff in it while I was staying at a hotel trying to figure stuff out. And so I ended up uh, calling my mom who lives in Florida and saying, kind of like the ultimate humility, I guess. It was very humbling, but I was like, you know, hey, I, I need to get out of here. Can I still come stay with you guys? And she, she accepted me with open arms. So I've been here about 32 days and I got a job. You know, I started last week. So. You know, I'm just trying to get my life back together, um, trying to get a car, trying to get my own place and then do some other things that I want to do for my for my life and for my music career. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling very good about where I am today, but that's pretty much my background, I guess. Right. OK. Now, share with us how, you know, you said 32 days ago, your life completely changed and you made some choices. Tell us a little bit about that, just so that we know where you are as far as that goes. Okay, so like, you know, I was trying to make it work with this girl for about five years. And I, I love her. I still love her to this day. It's just we're not meant to be together, apparently. Um, and so it got to a point where, you know, we had gone out with a mutual friend that we hadn't seen in a long time. And, you know, I went to bed early and they stayed up a little bit later. And I woke up hearing them you know, together sexually. And I walked in on it actually, um, which was very, very like eye opening and like what the hell is happening. So I packed up all my stuff. I went to a hotel. Um, luckily I have a great friend slash manager who, who put me up in a hotel for a few weeks while I was trying to figure out what to do next. And, um, at the hotel, a couple of days into it, my car was stolen with all my belongings in it. And I was actually left at a point to where I only, I didn't even have a pair of jeans or own a pair of shoes. Like I had a pair of sandals and my computer luckily, cause I had that in the hotel. Um, and so for a couple of weeks there, I was, you know, I wasn't thinking clearly, you know, I was definitely like everything is happening at once and I don't know how to like get out of this shit storm. And I basically, yeah. you know, I basically isolated myself in the hotel. Um, I, I wasn't staying sober. I, um, you know, I was working on my music and I basically put my heart and soul into my music for a couple of weeks. And that literally was all I was doing. And I was kind of like 
ignoring the fact that my life was like crashing down like rapidly and just like it wasn't happening and you know by the grace of god i really just something clicked in my head that i can't do this anymore you know i got to get out of this situation and i was mm-hmm. never able to leave the relationship and i was never a, the codependency i was just i was never able to like get away from that it mm-hmm. became and that was just my everyday life and i was used to it and mm-hmm. uh, and i couldn't i couldn't remove myself on my own will and so i had actually written a text to my mom like a week prior before i sent it <laughs> Like, you know, and it was just like, hey, mom, it's not working out here. And like, you know, you're a 36 year old man. You know, I just turned 36. It's not, you know, I'm not looking forward to sending my mom a text saying, hey, I need help. Like, can I come to Florida, you know? And but like I said, by the grace of God, it kind of clicked in my head that it's not going to work with her. And to me, it's still the hardest decision that I've ever had to make. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what we went through, no matter what she did, no matter what I did, for whatever reason, I guess it's a love in my heart and I'm a forgiving person, but I was always able to overlook it and try to find the good in her. And I always had faith that it was going to work out. And um, the reality is, is that, you know, it's not. And it just took so long for me to like really realize that, you know, like to this day, I haven't talked to her in 40 days. And that's probably the longest I haven't talked to her since I, since I met her. So. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting, you know, when you talk about that, because I'm sure there were days where you were just going back and forth in your head with those invasive thoughts of, do I stay? Do I go? You know, it's the choices that you make. So when you say the grace of God, it's almost like you were guided into the right direction. You know who you are. You listen to your heart instead of going with your invasive, you know, the thoughts in your mind. Sometimes I think we're held prisoner in our own mind and it's all of the beliefs that have been programmed that are false of ourselves. Whereas when you came from a place of your heart, you know deep down your creator you know that you can express your true being by being real to who you are and through music which is amazing because through music i mean music is is goes right straight to the soul right so share a little bit about how that was with your music like well i would say like just to address what you were saying like i I wouldn't say I necessarily went with my heart because if it was up to my heart, I would still be there trying to make it work because my heart, my heart yearns for her and it still does. But I would say my, my conscious, clear thinking mind, you know, reared its head and said, Hey, like you can't listen to your heart. Like this isn't going to work. You got to do what's best for you. And, uh, and I even, it was, it was very hard because she, you know, we did, she did even come to the hotel a couple of days. Like we, we hung out like I went and played volleyball with her one time at, at this thing she does. And we went and had dinner and she stayed the night with me a couple of times. And like, it just didn't feel the same anymore. It didn't feel right anymore. And like, and she did, you know, she did try to get me to stay, you know, and she did say like, you're, you're making this like big decision and you're not even like, like she basically wanted me to stay. And I yeah. heard my mind up that I was going. And so the last couple of days I was there, I didn't even see her or even contact her, which to me seems crazy. You know what I mean? Because the old me would have wanted to spend every day with her before I left. Yeah. Um, but as far as my music goes, I mean, music has always been my therapy during my addiction. You know, mm-hmm. and I say that in my songs and, you know, it really has been my rehab. And I, I mean that sincerely. You know, I, I don't know if you've listened to a lot of my music, but. I'm very honest. I'm very sincere. And like, I might have a shit storm going on in my life, but I'm not talking to anybody about it. Nobody knows what's going on in my life, but my music is telling you what's going on in my life. That's, mm-hmm. that's the, the way it is. You know what I mean? I, that's the way it, it comes out. And um, I'm very excited about my music, especially where it's headed. Cause like I've always, since I started making music, I've always wanted to follow a mantra of, I always wanted my music to be a direct reflection of my current state of mind. So while, yeah. I, so while I was going through cheating and codependency and addiction, my music's very dark. 
You know, it really is. And, it, and unfortunately, like, I listen to it sometimes and I'm like, holy shit, this is actually about me and about my life. And it, it's still like, you know, mind opening to me or eye opening. But mm -hmm. yeah. now I'm excited because like I'm starting to make music that's more positive. And it's not about my ex. It's not about the drug addiction and facing my demons. It's about moving on and like how life is good and recovery is good. And like, you know, thinking back of how it was and like, holy crap that, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's really exciting to me that my music is changing because my life is good right now. So my music is going to be a little bit different. And I hope my fans and my, you know, followers, you know, appreciate where I'm headed with my music, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, Jackson, because I heard you say like your, your ex actually did come to the hotel and you did feel something was different. So I did. I'm curious when you say you felt, because usually when you use your mind, you think, but feeling is, comes from a different place. Well, first off, like like I said, I wasn't completely sober when I was in this hotel, you know, so I probably wasn't thinking as clear as I could have in the first place. Yeah. Looking back at our relationship, it was very, sex was a big part of it, especially sex while we were using. And right. like, you know, when she came to the hotel a couple of days, we, we honestly were not intimate at all. Like we barely even kissed. It just didn't, it didn't feel right anymore. And I think kind of like you said a minute ago, how like, God put these obstacles in my life to to help me realize what I needed to do. And so like I needed the extreme, the the ultimate extreme happening, literally waking up to my girlfriend moaning while I'm sleeping upstairs in our bed and walking to the downstairs room and seeing her sleeping with my friend while I'm upstairs. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's like to me that's shit you see on Jerry Springer. That's not stuff that happens in my life. And, yeah. yeah. Wake up. So, yeah, so I needed like that ultimate thing to happen. Like she's cheated on me in the past, and don't get me wrong, I you know I wasn't a saint either in my own way, but yeah. but I I was always able to overlook it, but I never saw it firsthand happening. Like what the you know, and especially with our friend who we were just all out together a couple hours like prior and being all buddy buddy with me and things like that. So yeah, and that so, makes it tough too because it was a friend, right? So you've been yeah. yeah. Well, not like a good friend or anything, but somebody who were like, that shouldn't be in this, you know, allowed, you know what I mean? And, yeah, so, yeah. and then my car got stolen with all my belongings. And it's like, now I'm stuck in a hotel. Like I got no money. I'm broke. My ex is out of the picture. I don't have many friends. Like she was like kind of my everything. And now yeah. I, don't, I don't have any belongings. I don't have a car. Like I barely have anything. Like I don't know how I'm living day to day. Like literally there were days where I didn't know if I was going to be able to afford the hotel the next day. You know what I mean? And that was like scary as shit to me. Cause I'm like, I could literally be homeless and I'm like sitting here in the hotel doing nothing about it instead of like doing music. So it's like, I'm lucky everything worked out the way it did. This Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because pretty well you were at rock bottom and you know, when you wake up, like the grace of God, like you say, is when you hit rock bottom and it's like, okay, what, what, I have a choice here. I either play victim or I do something about it. And, you know, you, you went, you looked within yourself and you're creating with your music and, and you're getting your life back on track, right? Which is, we all have the power to do that. We all like it's funny because we all matter and sometimes we look to the outer world for our um for our agreement right like we look inside ourselves we know we we feel what's right for us right right but somewhere along the lines from being born to where we are now we've been convinced otherwise that we're not good enough or we're not lovable or there's you know there's so much that we're incapable of doing whatever it might be like mine is i'm not i'm not smart enough i've never felt like i fit in i've never felt like i belong you know like i've always been brought up that with that because i think differently than most people and i don't understand a lot of 
things that are going on around me. Right. But when I look inside, I know that we're all born with the same purpose, and that is to be alive, not to be in misery. Right. That is to be able to connect to each other. And like just talking to you, I'm learning more about my life through through you and to me that's what it's about is learning from each other embracing our differences and right. being true to who we are that's and if you're if you're like one to you disagree with infidelity it'll never work out because that's that's who you are right right yeah it's one of those things where like uh, you know, over the years in my music, like I, I've been very, um, I guess I was very smart at the beginning because I built a friends list on, on Facebook. That was a lot of people in recovery. Um, yeah. I, I did it unintentionally really. Um, but I, but I kind of realized in my mind subconsciously that them get through it. And like, I'm not saying any of that to brag or anything, but it's, oh, a, no. it's, a, very, yeah. it's a very humbling experience to me that my, that my story through my songs, helps other people because like for me sometimes I, I know i said it's my therapy but sometimes like my music doesn't even help me get through shit and like to know that it's like that powerful to help other people is just like it makes me think that i was meant to do this you know and, and like i was telling you before we started the live interview like the first song i ever wrote it started off as a poem and mm -hmm. it literally came to me like i'd been writing music my whole life like it was a zen feeling like I've, I've never did that before in my life, you know, and all of a sudden, like a day or two later, I put this whole song together. I found a beat and like I composed it like like I knew what I was doing. And mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still like that to this day. Like I have no I have no training at all, but it's like putting lyrics and putting words together and putting it to music. It just comes naturally to me, which is like, you know, it's crazy. It's like anybody's skill. You know, it's just something that took me 34 years to discover. It's your divine purpose. Yeah, I mean, I will say one yeah. of my one of my songs is actually called "Worst Days," and I say in that song sometimes the worst days are the best days of your life. And to me, I truly feel like I was supposed to go through what I went through in order to get to the best me that I could be. And so, like, I'm just I'm just extremely grateful that I feel like I finally got there, you know. And it's only getting better, so I'm excited. Well, what's really cool is you're saying the same things that I was saying uh, maybe two weeks ago is I just want to be the best version of myself. And that's exactly, you know, when you get to that point, you'll see that you light up and you're going to light up everybody that surrounds you because you're, you're, you're you're following your heart and you're leading in the direction that you want to go you're passionate about it it's your purpose i, I will say that you know not to, as far as like pursuing my music dream i don't really yeah. have a lot of personal people in my life that support it and i'll be completely honest there like even my mom and stuff that i live with they're like they're like focus on your job like who don't don't do worry about your music and i'm like you know what? I'm going to work. I'm doing my job. I'm getting my life together. What I do in my spare time, you know, back off, you know, because like it's yeah. something that I do truly, truly love. And don't get me wrong. I do have some friends who really show me some love and support. And I talk to a lot about my music, but the social media following that I have on, on Facebook and the love and support that encouragement that I get from these people on a daily basis is like, it's what keeps me going and knows that I'm supposed to do this. And so yeah. that's warming to me. I don't make any money from my music at this point. Like I've literally, yeah. I've literally profited or I literally made about $17 and I, between me and my manager, we probably put in almost 10 grand. I don't even know the number. So yeah. if that, comes, if that comes to fruition one day, great. But I've always told myself and I, and I truly mean it. Like, I don't, I don't want to do music for the fame. I could care less about that. Like that's I want to, I want to do music cause I want to do it. And it's and I'll be honest, it's not necessarily to, to help people either. I'm glad it does, but I just want to do music for a living. Cause like I've mm -hmm. always I've always been told that find what you love to do and your passion and do it for a living. And it took me forever to find that. But now that I've found it, I want to get to the point where I can do that. Yeah. So that's my goal long term. 
And you know what? Never give, never give in, never give up because it is your purpose. And um, when I first started my group, which was just an idea I had, um, a musician that was just starting off joined my group. His name's David James. I should introduce you to him. He's wonderful. He's he he's like you. He's very passionate. Has a good heart. And he's actually, he's like you, like it was just, it was a dream of his. Right. And he is like, he's reaching for the stars now, like he's really doing good. And, and uh, he never believed it at first, but he never gave up. Right. So what I'm saying to you is don't give up. You've got such powerful messages in your music. And that's what it's about it's about inspiring others to you know to rise and shine and that life is meant for living not being in misery right right well the cool thing that i've been doing lately which um, i haven't even told you about but you know i've had some fans in recovery that are now people i call friends but they um they have sent me their writings and their poems that they've written about their own experience and I've been able to take their words and turn it into a song. And honestly, for me, it's fairly easy. For whatever reason, it just comes. But like I've been able to do this about six or seven times now where people send me their lyrics and like I, I fine tune them, I find a hook and I record it. And next thing you know, I'm telling their story through music. And it's been something that's just been really awesome, you know? And like even that one person I know you know, I've, I've made their day or their week or their month or year, or whatever the case may be, just by putting their music into the words, you know, and that's something that they're always going to know is that they helped write a song and it's their story, you know, and that's something yeah. that's super cool. So I'm excited. Yeah, that is, that is really super cool. And, you know, I actually am, I'm not quite ready yet, but I am looking for someone to create a song about what I've created, like the movement that I'm creating. And I've got lots of things like rise up and shine, the impossible is possible, believe to achieve, love conquers all. So I got a lot of, yeah, I got to do it, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, I think it would be awesome. So, you know, I, I, I always get all these ideas. So definitely. Um, it's just pretty yeah. crazy because I'll, I'll have the lyrics and I'll just listen to some beats and all of a sudden I'll just start flowing, you know, and like, I'm like, okay, this works. And then I'll add some words and, you know, like an hour and a half later, I got a song, you know, it's kind of crazy. That's a gift. And it's got, you got, you, yeah, you got it. And it don't, don't give up on that. Cause yeah. it's almost like you can, you can see it, feel it and hear it to the words. And like, I'm still trying to figure out my vocals. And because I'm very, in my opinion, I'm very versatile. I got like a singing voice. I got a rock voice. I got a rap voice. I got a country voice. Oh, and wow. They all might not be like perfect. But yeah. at the same time, I remind myself like I've been doing this a little over two years. And yeah. during, during that two years, I was deep into drugs. I spent two months in jail. I was in sober living. I was going through hell. You know, like I was living in places where I couldn't record music. Like, so to know like I've come this far in two years, like, I know I'm going to keep evolving and keep getting better. And so that's something that's really exciting to me as well. Just kind of figuring out my natural ability, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I can tell you is everyone that surrounds you, and I'm dealing with this right now too, is a lot of people that are closest to you will never understand your journey. Right. It's your journey. It's not theirs. No, I agree with that 100%. Like, right? like, it's okay that my mom doesn't support this, my stepdad doesn't, because, like, I can now say I believe in myself, you know, and that's really all that I need. Like, that's all you need. I'm yeah. Going to work, making my money, and coming home and working on music. Like, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that being my life. So, yeah. I'm excited. And, and it's their choice if they want to join you on your journey. Yeah. Right? Okay. You choose them to go on your journey, but if they if they don't choose it, then that's I, I my mom the other night because like you know I always try to get her to listen to my songs and stuff, and I'm like I'm like so you're just not going to support me now? I was like I bet you support me once I make it, and she's yeah. like and she's like yeah, and I'm like come on man, like that's I the know. Like, so. 
Yeah. Oh, wait, you just wait. That that's so funny because that ha that's happening here too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just know she wants the best for me and she's my mom and she worries about my life. Very exactly. Yeah, she, was down, she is probably the happiest person on earth that I got out of that situation. So yeah. yeah. Well, and I think deep down you're probably happy too because your life is evolving now. I'm very happy, you know. I'm meeting new people and like I'm being um I guess for lack of better words, a strong minded person yep. where, where I can say no to things. Like, you know, I, I met some really cool people, a guy I work with and his girlfriend, and they actually invited me to go out for her birthday and to go to the beach with them. And I I don't have a drinking problem, but I knew that they were gonna be drinking. And with me being like thirty two days completely sober, I just I didn't want to put myself in the situation. Because maybe I would have wanted to drink and like I, I like my sobriety right now. I like how I'm thinking. And yeah. so I was able to like say no, even though I don't know anybody in Florida. So that was kind of cool that like I just said no. You know what I mean? It's something as simple as saying no. But just say no. Yeah, yeah. Right? Whatever you say, that's not just say no. Right, right. It's like those chocolate bars. Just say no. No. <laughs> I like chocolate though. But... Yeah, no, you know what it is? The mind is very powerful. And for some reason, I think as we grow up, our mind likes to attach to negative thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. That negative energy. And it seems to repeat the negative rather than the positive. Right. So for you even work on positive affirmations like i am strong i am good at what i do i am gonna make it i am powerful i am right like just all so, those good things absolutely because it does help and i i like when i first started doing it, i used to go out into the woods and like i'm healthy <laughs> right like just give her Right. And and other things is you know listening to different um, different things that help you like journaling is another one you know right how you're feeling what's going on in your mind because we all have good and bad days too don't we absolutely I can honestly say in thirty two days I've had no bad days you know like even the days where I was kind of getting myself back to normal like i knew i was getting myself back to normal so i felt good about it absolutely that's awesome but so like that street going you know but you never know when you're gonna have a bad day but as long yeah. as the day doesn't turn into a bad week and so forth yeah because i think when we first connected you you were having a bit of a time because we were going to connect and then yeah so Probably. <laughs> <laughs> in the last five months or so my relationship was not good by any means so yeah. like, i knew it was kind of getting to that point but it is what it is you know yeah and 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 it is a learning opportunity you know with pain comes growth so remember that too that even the good the bad the ugly it use use it as a learning opportunity always learn something from it and make sure that you don't repeat it going forward for you it's right. all about you right it's your, yeah. it's your about story. the good bad and the ugly i just want someone to hug me or something like that i don't know <laughs> there you go yeah, you start true. another song it's true yeah. you need to find somebody and you know long term i got right now relationships are the furthest thing from my mind and i i'm cool with that but like yeah, eventually you got to find somebody that will stick with you through everything and will support you and what you want to do and you know i haven't found that person yet you know my ex could care less about my music too so like once i finally meet somebody that treats me well and supports my music like i'm probably going to think i'm in heaven you know yeah yeah but, yeah well and you know it's good that you recognize that that you don't want a relationship right now because the the most important thing is and i think you're working on this is to love yourself right? right and and to take care of yourself to tr to to eat proper nutrition to get lots of rest <laughs> right yeah and and yeah, you know yeah uh -huh. 
And then once you do that, guess what? You can spread your love and it, it, you'll you'll get it right back. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So well, it is half an hour. Doesn't it go fast? It does, it does. Yeah. And your dogs are conked out in the back. So like if my <laughs> mom watches this, she's gonna be like, all right, at least at least he's got the dogs in it, you know? Yeah, I got my dogs, yeah. This is going worldwide, by the way. Yeah, yeah. The other yeah. one the other one's not here hiding. Yeah. And um, okay, so is there anything that you wanted to add to this? Like I know we've got your links in the um in the pre-scheduled notice, but is there any anything that can help you that you want to add that we haven't talked about or um not, not really to be honest i mean i you know i love the support from everybody so like you know if you are going through addiction or recovery or issues where you're having a tough time i mean you may want to check out some of my music because it's real and it's from my experience and a lot of people have found it relatable um mm -hmm. and if you do great and i would love to hear about it because I'm, I'm very I'm very interacting with my fans and followers. I try as best as I can to reply to everybody and stuff. So, you know, I, I really don't have anything else. I mean, I just go check out my channel if you like uh, real, real music related to recovery. Yeah. And leave a comment because, I mean, you know, if, if someone's struggling and you can help them, I know you're the type of person that will. So I definitely, definitely try my best for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jackson, for taking the time to be with us this evening. I appreciate you having me. It's my first time ever like interviewing with anybody like this. So awesome. We'll we'll do it again. And hey, maybe we'll create a music for our group. Heck yeah, I'm ready. That'd be awesome. Okay, you take care. Oh, you too. Take care. Thank Super you. Cool.